Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to provide a full review of this. This is the Acer A515-58M99FD. What does all that mean? Basically, it's the A515 model, but it's the top end trim, which includes the Intel i9 CPU. However, if yours is different, don't worry about it. Most of the stuff we're going to talk about in here is relevant. We're also going to provide a partial disassembly to show you what you can upgrade in it and what you can't. And there is a surprise in here, we think. So let's get to it. So there's nothing useful in the box. Typical North American plug because we're in North America. However, it's a universal brick. This is a 120 to 240 brick. So you can plug it in anywhere in the world and it will work. Now we have all the specialized tools, but we're going to try not to use them when we pull this apart so that you can see how you could do it. Now a couple things to know about this. This was released in January of 2023, which is the same time the CPU was released. We'll get into the CPU model in a minute, but the point is this is now the spring summer of 2025. So it's a little bit older unit. Our client sourced this from Costco. They just want to run their home business off of it. It's going to replace an old Dell Inspiron laptop. And it's a good thing that this is being used at home and not at work. We'll explain why in just a minute. All right, let's get to the ports, power lights. So if it's amber, it needs charging or could be charged. If it's blue, it's uh, fully charged. Headphone jack, you don't care. You're just gonna use Bluetooth, but it's there if you do care. USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, that runs at five gigabit per second, which is not great, but it'll run all of your standard uh, things like printers, keyboards, mice, all that stuff. Kensington lock, most people won't care about that, but you might. Then on the back, there's a single vent. Then over here, we have a barrel jack. That is for your power, but you probably won't use it because if you're like a lot of people, you'll put this on a dock, and that dock is probably going to be USB Type-C. That port will allow you to output uh, two 4K monitors. It'll also input power, so you can charge your laptop off it if you have a dock on this, which is pretty nice. That is an HDMI port, which you think, okay, HDMI is pretty standard. Yeah, except that's an HDMI 2.1 port. So again, you can put all of the high definition monitors on there as opposed to the lower end HDMI 1.4 where you can't. And then there's just another USB 3.2 type one port, which is a lowly five gigabit per second. So just to, as a point of comparison, five gigabit per second here, 40 gigabit per second there. How fast is 40 gigabit? Because, you know, if you're not a tech, that doesn't mean much. It's as fast as a modern internal SSD. Precision touchpad, that is a fingerprint scanner. Why do you want to use that? Because this does not have an infrared camera, which means you can't use face recognition. So the fingerprint scanner that's available right here is very nice indeed. You'll also notice that they mentioned elevated design, and that's correct. If you Shift this back and forth, you'll see that it raises the keyboard in just such a way that it'll make it easier for you to type. It has a backlit keyboard. It also has a, a number pad. The feel on this keyboard is good. It's not great, but it's good. And there's not too much flex in it. So in the, in the whole chassis, it's a fairly stiff chassis, which is nice. Power button is here. And if you're looking for odd buttons, why is there no co-pilot button on here? That's because this is not quote an AI PC. We'll get into the CPU when we pull this apart and explain why this machine is not eligible. And this screen is a normal HD screen, high definition. 1080p, what does that mean? Well, the P now means nothing because all screens are progressive, so we'll leave that alone. But it's 1,080 dots from the bottom to the top and 1,920 dots across the top. Well, across the whole screen for that matter. And this is a 15.6 inch diagonal screen. It's an IPS screen and if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Basically, it means it's a standard laptop screen. It is not a high-end OLED screen. And again, if you don't know what that is, you don't worry about it. Okay, let's disassemble this. So as we've said, we have specialized tools, but you won't need to use them. You can simply get away with a Phillips screwdriver. These are all Phillips screws. So you just look for a pry point, but there really isn't one on this, as there aren't on most of them. Usually get into a corner and sort of pry it up. This one doesn't quite want to go, so I'm going to force it a bit using, well, I'll just use a pair of scissors. Again, I could use a proper pry tool, but just to show you, you don't really need it, pry it up at the hinge here. A little bit, and then slide the credit card along. There we go. Just keep sliding it along. Now this is better than most of the Dell Inspirons because it's anodized aluminum, not plastic. Now all of these screws are the same. Usually what I do is I use a magnetic tip screwdriver, pull these screws out and pro tip, I lay them out in the way they came out, but I know all of these are the same size, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, let's go over the parts. Battery. This is a 50 watt hour battery. 
uh, and that'll get you, well, they claim between nine and 12 hours, depending on what you're doing with it. Basically, if you're doing normal office operations with this, you're going to get about uh, nine, 10 hours of battery out of it, which is fine. If you ever need to replace it, pull back this tape, pop off this clip, unscrew and lift the battery out, put the new one in, you're on your way. Speakers, you're never going to pull those out, so don't worry about them. That you might be willing to change in the future. In this case, it's a one terabyte M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. That's a lot of acronyms, but it boils down to it's your modern hard drive. And this is a 2280, which means it's 22 millimeters by 80 millimeters, but it will support a physically smaller one. You might want to put in a four terabyte or an eight terabyte in the future. It'll probably work. One screw, pull it out, pop the new one in, you're on your way. Here's something that's a little disappointing, at least on the surface, but when you think about it, it's probably just fine. This is your RAM, and this is 32 gig of RAM, which is the maximum for this system. Why do I say disappointed? Well, because it's not in a slot, you can't change it. Okay, but it's at the maximum. Eh, okay. Now, this is the slowest of the DDR5. DDR5 is the most current, fastest RAM you can get. But DDR5 comes in different speeds. This is the slowest at 4800. And you might say, oh no, it's terrible, it's the slow one. No, it's the slowest of the modern killer RAM. 4800 is excellent. That is also great. That is your Wi-Fi card. And you think, well, you're gonna talk Wi-Fi? Yes, because this isn't just regular Wi-Fi. This is Wi-Fi 6, and this isn't just regular Wi-Fi 6. This is Wi-Fi 6E. It's in another M.2 slot. So you could change it in the future, but you're not going to because this is going to be the standard for quite a long time. These two lines are antennas. One of them goes behind the keyboard, one of them goes behind the monitor, so no matter which way you have the laptop placed, the antennas are gonna pick it up. Here's what's interesting. That the numbers, Wi-Fi 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's literally just the iteration. It doesn't mean anything. And it gets confusing here because Wi-Fi 6 E, which is the latest standard, is enhanced. And that runs on the six gigahertz band. And why do you care about that? It means that it will run much smoother. There's very few devices that it's competing with in the six gigahertz frequency. And it's the latest thing. It's really great. Now here's something else that's a little disappointing. This is a heat pipe that goes to your fan. And what's below this is a, what's called a heat spreader. The CPU and the video card are under. This doesn't look to me to be the most robust heat uh, solution in the world. But one of the things is that it blows in front of the monitor when you open this rather than out behind. And it's not that large. I would like to see it to be larger because that is an Intel Core i9-13900H. The H is the high performance unit as opposed to the U, which is the ultra mobile unit that's normally found in these things. The H is epic. And you might think 13, that's the 13th generation, that's old. Well, it is two generations old. Well, generation and a half old. The latest stuff are, uh, from Intel is called Core Ultra. And the equivalent chip today would be the Core Ultra 9 185H. So what's this missing? Most notably, what it's missing is it doesn't have an NPU or a neural processing unit for artificial intelligence applications. However, most people really aren't going to use that. AI is still a lot of hype these days, and most of it is done online, not on the device. So you probably just don't care. Another thing is if you benchmark this CPU to the most current equivalent from Intel, what you'll find is this actually beats it in performance spec often. Why? If it's an older chip? because this runs with a turbo boost that lasts longer than the new chip. And this is one hell of a machine. We'll power it up in a minute. We'll show you what appears to be 20 cores, six performance cores, which can process two threads each, so that's 12, and eight efficiency cores. You can think of them as an i5 from about 2017. So the efficiency cores run extremely low power and they'll run almost everything you're doing, you know, browsing, even basic games. And it won't even kick in the high-end processors that are in here. And the last thing to note, the video is also built into here. And it's running the Iris XE G7, which is 96 execution units. Again, I know it's a lot of tech, techno crap. You're going to be able to run any office application on this beautifully. You're going to be able to run advanced things on this, including things like Photoshop, beautifully. You can even play games on here with lower resolution and lower refresh rates. So for 99% of the population out there, this is awesome. However, it isn't the latest and greatest. You may not be able to see it, but it's a backlit keyboard. All right, so before we get to our review, we're gonna clean a couple of things up in Windows 11. First thing, I can't stand having a menu that bounces around. I'm moving it back over there, and I'm gonna set these to uncombine. So right-click on the taskbar, taskbar settings, 
turn off all of the junk. Left. Turn off combine. There we go. Click the start button, select settings, select the Windows update, download and install. Ignore all of that, scroll to the bottom, go to advanced, turn on get updates from other machines that are on your network, and definitely go to optional updates and take any drivers that are there. Then go to apps, and get rid of the junk that comes pre-installed, in this case, primarily McAfee. Do not want to use third-party antivirus. You don't need it. it. Slows your machine down. It's basically a lot of advertising. No need to tell them anything, just say remove. Removing McAfee will turn Windows Defender back on. It's not the best, but it's very good. Then I like to look at device manager, see if there's anything toast in here. No, everything looks fine. Let this finish updating, which will take a little bit. Let's look at task manager so you can see all of those awesome cores. Go over here, right click, change to logical processors. Sweet. So you have one chip with 14 cores, but because of the performance cores being able to support two processes at a time, you see there are 20 logical processors. That's impressive. There's your 32 gig of RAM, Wi-Fi 6, your SSD, and the graphics card that's built in, which is the Iris XE. So off camera, I've rebooted. Uh, after a patching, I've gone back and tried to patch again. Currently, I've gone to portal.office.com, doing the Microsoft Office install. And uh, something you should know is uh, Acer has kind of a crap support system. So with a Dell or an HP, you can simply go to their website and say, hey, tell me what I need. You can't do that with the Acer. With Acer, you gotta do it all manually, uh, a la 2005. It's not great. Go to acer.com and then go to support, drivers and manuals. And here it's gonna ask you, you know, well, what device do you have? There's a utility here. So you can just download, or you can read the number on the back of your computer. That's a huge pain. Serial number, just click copy. It doesn't even tell you it's copied. It's pretty weak. Paste it in. And here are all of your drivers. The problem is it doesn't tell you which ones you're missing. You really just have to rely on the dates. However, I think Windows Update already updated all of these. The stickers on the keyboard, you just leave alone. But this sticker up here, this is just advertising. And it will just, yeah, it does just pull off. And one more big change to make before we provide our review. Go into your file explorer. And of course, you don't have to do this, but this is what we like. Can't stand all of this magic wizard stuff. I want to go to this PC every time and I want file extensions. How do you do that? Click the ellipsis, go to options, change this from home to this PC, click on view, uncheck hide extensions for unknown file types. All right, so let's get to our review of the Acer A515 58M 99FD. You can just think of it as the A515. What do we like about this thing? We love Thunderbolt. It's the way to go. You can connect an 8K screen, you can connect two 4K screens, a dock, you can split it out, you can do tons of stuff with it. Great feature. We love the CPU. We wish that it was the Ultra because we'd like the NPU, the Neural Processing Unit, in the newer ones, but it practically doesn't make any difference. And as we mentioned, the benchmarks actually show this is faster even though it's older. We also like that this is rigid. Uh, this is made of anodized aluminum, not a plastic. Uh, a competing product for this would be the Dell Inspiron 14 plus, the Dell Inspiron 15 plus, and the Dell Inspiron 16 plus. But it's made of plastic. This is aluminum. It's gonna be a lot harder to scratch. And if you watch your review, you'll see the Dells, the, when they're plastic, you can scratch them. We love the 32 gig of RAM, but it's unfortunate that it's soldered on. Now that's the most you can put in, so it probably doesn't make any difference, but it just kind of irks them that you can't change it, just purely on principle. And the one terabyte drive, great. It's not a GP, it's M.2 SSD, which is exactly what you want these days. Is it the fastest SSD? No, but it's fine. The backlit keyboard's also a nice feature. So let's get to what we don't like in this thing. What we don't like are things that the company that just bought this couldn't care less about. First thing, we like touch screens. This doesn't have it. Secondly, we like using Windows Hello face recognition. This you can't use it with because it doesn't have an infrared camera. This is Windows 11 Home. Now, this is being used in a small business, so it's not a problem. But if you want to connect this to a domain, you can't use Windows 11 Home. You have to upgrade to Windows 11 Pro. And again, the current owner couldn't care less. He's, he doesn't have a domain. And the last two things are kind of nitpicky. 
One, they claim it to be 3.9 pounds. So I'm gonna round that to four because they always sort of stretch that a bit. Uh, executives uh, and people I norm uh, normally work with are used to working with laptops closer to three pounds. So is that a crisis, an extra pound? Oh no, it's fine. But um, if you're used to carrying a three pound laptop, four is a little, it's noticeable. You'll, you definitely will notice that. The Dell website is far superior to the Acer website. With this one, I need to enter my own codes and track down what I'm looking for. Is that a crisis? No, not at all. But it's an unnecessary pain and Acer really should have had that fixed a decade ago. So hey, if you found this video useful, a big thumbs up would be super appreciated. Subscribes also always appreciated. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because on YouTube, everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.